Okay, I'm very excited to be here. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, today, I want to talk to you about why Relay is a must for your GraphQL APIs. I'm Marion, I'm head of developer education at Hasura, and I'm leading the documentation team and the technical evangelists team. In my free time, I like dirt biking. This is me and the love of my life, my 250cc Kawasaki. So if you're also dirt biking, come later and talk to me about it. But let's get back to the presentation. So as I said, I'm working at Hasura. Hasura was founded in 2017. Our headquarters is here at San Francisco. So if you have some time, stop by and say hi. Um, we do have a pretty large open source community because the source um, the core of Hasura is open source, um, which is one of the reasons I joined uh, more than four years ago. Um, who here has heard about Hasura? Okay, so lots of people, that's great. For those who haven't, we'll just show very quickly. So Hasura enables you to have GraphQL APIs and other APIs on top of all of your data sources. So if you come in with an existing database, you can just add it here. In the Hasura console, you can see here, we do support a lot of different databases. And now we have added the ability of um, writing a connector, like you can write your own connector if you want to use a database that we don't yet support. Um, then for business logic, we have actions, remote schemas, and we have event triggers. I don't want to go into more detail here. So if you're interested, check it out. Now, let's get back to the topic at hand. Now, as you've seen just now, this is the Hasura console, and we faced kind of, uh, not a problem, but let's say a challenge in our team. Um, so Hasura has been growing for the last few years um, pretty consistently. And as we were growing our whole development team, we also wanted to grow our UI team. And this kind of turned out a little bit more difficult, because just like with the other teams, we added more developers but it actually didn't really help. Um, to be honest, probably it even got a little worse um, because like teams, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> what happened was teams broke other, other teams components and which means like another problem was that it was almost impossible to get onboarded on one part of the code base and then build something small but you had to understand the whole code base even to make a small change. So we were asking ourselves, like, how can we parallelize and accelerate the UI development? And also, like, have other teams got the same problems and how have they figured it out? So we went to talk to the community. And so I did like seven talks at meetups. And from what I heard, like, nobody has figured it out by themselves. So if you have, please come to the Hasura booth and let us know because we would love to hear about it. Now, when we were thinking about how to solve this problem, we saw three options. Option number one, independent micro apps. But we discarded this pretty quickly because like if several components have to load at the same time, it's pretty inefficient and leads to bad performance. And even worse, sometimes if you switch a tab, there's a reload because it's actually a different application that is loading. So this kind of sucks. Um, and even worse than this, it can lead to inconsistent state if data is updated in one component but not in the other. So we were like, no, this is not a good option. Then option number two was UI component ownership. What does this mean? It means it's one application, but teams are responsible for specific UI components. Now, also, this is not an option because there's a lot of shared state between the components and the data loading responsibility will always be with the root component, which then has to be manipulated by different teams as well, again, leading to regressions and the possibility of breaking each other's code. Also, our goal of humans, I mean, we do like humans and the fact that we work together, but we also want to have independent ownership of these UI components. <coughs> Then option number three that was when we discovered re, uh, relay style GraphQL. Now, who has heard about relay? Oh, wow. Who is using it in production? Okay. So looks like some relay fans here. 
Um, so for those who don't know, Relay is a data management tool um, for React. And it actually does allow for component ownership. And the way that it works is that you have GraphQL fragments and React components, and the data requirements are defined right at this um, GraphQL, comp um, GraphQL fragment and, and um, uh, React component. Then what happens is the Relay compiler goes through all of these queries and creates one big query for the whole tree, um, then making sure that the data gets updated consistently across all components. So whenever something gets updated in one component, it's, um, the Relay compiler gets updated and makes sure it's updated everywhere else as well. So now let's see how this looks like. Um, I have here a project in VS Code, pretty standard um, React project. It's um, an app here. Then it, we have a post list, post item, labels that belong to post, and post details. Now here in the post item, you can see very nicely what I meant before when I talked about GraphQL fragments and, and, um, and React components. So you can see here the GraphQL fragment, um, the post item fragment refers to the label fragment um, inside this file. And at the same time and in the same file, the post item um, component um, of React refers to the label component of React. So you can see the data requirement is defined right here. Um, then another thing is, and I will show the UI of this just in a second, if you click on a specific um, post on the main page, provided that it's not already in the cache, then a new query will be fired um, to retrieve the post detail. Now, very quickly, this is not part of like this project, but I just wanted to show it here um, so that you can get a better picture, but I will also show it in the browser just in a second. This is, you can see here, all these components that we have and Relay automatically, the Relay compiler automatically creates this big query out of all the queries that we have, which will then render the whole component tree. Now let's look at the UI. Okay, first of all, what I'm doing is a reload here. And you can see here that despite we have loaded data across several components, there's only one GraphQL query. And you can see here that in fact, this is exactly the same query um, as I showed you before. Um, then we have here some user data, a list of posts um, and labels that belong to the post and it's also interactive. So if I click on one of the posts, I can see details and the labels of this post. Now, one thing that is interesting is that this is the Relay Global Node ID. Now, what is the Relay Global Node ID? This is something that needs to be implemented in your application to make sure that every single um, item in your database and across all of your data sources, whatever, has a unique identifier that then can be presented. And now I will show you a video to kind of show some magic about Relay. And the reason that this is a video is this is the new Hasura V3 console, which is not 100% production ready. <laughs> so, yes, but the point is kind of showing the magic of Relay. So we have here a query, and you can see here the query contains labels and posts and labels. So, and we can pass an identifier that is an ID um, to this query to show a specific post or label. Now what we're doing is we want to retrieve a post. Um, so we have a global node ID that we're passing as a variable um, to this query as here as an identifier. And then we fire the query and you can see even though the query contains posts and labels, what comes back is just a post because this is the relay magic. It can discover kind of to what table that we're referring to and then the response gives back exactly what we need. Now, let's try to change um, this Relay Global Node ID from post to a label. 
<coughs> and we can see here what's coming back is um, a label. So yeah, I think this is really nice um, that Relay can do this and, and very powerful. Yes, the label comes back. Cool. Okay. Um, yes, the query now ignores the post and only returns the label. Perfect. So let's go back to the slide. Okay, and now because we um, discovered kind of the power and magic of Relay, we also want to make it available to everybody else. Um, and kind of the way it helped us, um, it would be very nice if it can help scale other UI teams as well. And maybe you f if you follow updates of Hasura, you might have heard that we're working very hard on our third version of Hasura, um, which powers something that we call data delivery network. Now, what do we mean by data delivery network? So what we want to do is enable for users to create a super graph of all their data sources. Now, this is not a super graph of APIs, but of actual data sources. And it's a connector approach. Um, as I've mentioned before, in addition to all the databases that we support natively, you can now build your own connectors, making sure that all of your data sources can be added to this one super graph. Um, we will also offer full relay support, um, including all of the data sources, actions, um, remote schemas, um, everything that can be used with Hasura, um, because we do think um, it can help scale development in all of the teams. Then Hasura v3 comes with um, multi-region out of the box, and something that I'm very excited about is that you can move from development to production in less than one second. So very quickly, kind of you can iterate on your development um, cycles. I have some resources here, um, the, uh, a blog post that talks exactly about how to sc uh, scale UI development teams um, using Relay, and also Hasura DDN, um, the website that talks a little bit more about our next uh, version of Hasura. I think these slides will be shared with you later, so check it out if you're interested. Now, I have talked a little bit about some of the new concepts that we from Hasura want to introduce to the community, and Stanmai, our CEO, will talk more about this tomorrow in his keynote called, Is a GraphQL BFF Necessary in a Server-Side React World? So do come and check it out, um, as he will reveal a little bit more information on what we are working on. Now, something I'm very excited about, we have a challenge called Supergraph Top End Challenge, and it's about building and uh, executing the fastest GraphQL gateway, basically building a Supergraph. It started today at noon. It will finish tomorrow at noon, so you have 24 hours to build a Supergraph. Top prize will receive $1,000. Runners-up, I think, like 500 or something. And I think if you scan this QR code, you will come to this GitHub repository and where the problem statement, the goal, and everything um, is explained. So I do hope a lot of supergraphs will reach um, us and then we can um, crown the winners uh, tomorrow. And I do want to stop talking because my voice will be leaving me very soon, but <laughs> do come to our booth to learn more about um, our challenge. And if you want to talk about Relay, I will be at the booth today and tomorrow. Um, thank you so much for joining me and have a great rest of the conference.